Hi there, it's Rose Marcus, and this is Astrolink, July 2019. Two eclipses in Mercury retrograde coming up, so let me give you a quick overview of the month ahead. On the screen, you will see the listing of uh, planetary action for the month ahead. July 2nd, total solar eclipse in Cancer. That's at 10 and a half degrees Cancer. July 16, a partial lunar eclipse at 24 degrees of Capricorn. If your birthday falls on either of these dates or near them, or you have any uh, natal chart uh, uh, planets at the degrees of 10 or 24 of cardinal signs, the cardinal signs are Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn, then you are going to feel these uh, eclipses as potent catalysts. Of course, the July 2nd total solar eclipse, the only total solar eclipse of the year, by the way, um, is very potent for uh, both Canada and the USA, who are celebrating birthdays very close to that July 2nd date. And of course, uh, we can uh, just see the uh, barrage of news uh, regarding um, the archetype of cancer in so many different ways. Eclipses are uh, event generating and they are accelerating evolution. So they are catalysts for um, intensif intensified uh, action. And they get the action going well before the actual event date. So uh, these eclipses have been operational over the past few weeks. Uh, in, uh, and we've seen it uh, through all of the news. The total solar eclipse in Cancer on July 2nd is picking up the energy of the total lunar eclipse that we had back in January. So whatever it was that was going on in January, if these eclipses are relevant to you, then the, the eclipses in July are taking that to the uh, next phase, next step, the next level up with whatever the process is or circumstance that you are dealing with. Um, uh, let me just uh, finish off with the um, with the information here on on the page. Um, uh, on July first, Mars, which has been traveling through the sign of Cancer, enters Leo, uh, and um, just in time for the eclipse, uh, Mars in Leo is uh, is a trigger for that uh, total lunar eclipse back in January that happened at zero degrees Aquarius uh, Leo. On July 3rd, Venus enters Cancer. And on July 7, I'll just go to the next page for a second here, we have Mercury retrograde. So Mercury retrograde, July 7 to 31, starts at four and a half degrees of Leo, backing into uh, just uh, about 24 degrees of Cancer. So on uh, July 7, it will station retrograde. On July 19, Mercury will back out of Leo and take a revisit of Cancer. It will end retrograde on July 31st, and that July 31st happens to be a new moon in Leo and uh, also a super new moon. Uh, and on August 11, Mercury will re-enter Leo. August 15, it will surpass the degree that it began the retrograde cycle back there on July 7. So we've got all the way to the middle of August to be, um, uh, to be working our way through these uh, very big uh, uh, planetary influences in the month ahead. Uh, just to further off uh, what's on the page here, Ceres, which is traveling through Sagittarius, stations retrograde on July 14. Chiron, which is traveling through Aries, stations retrograde on the 17th. Eris, which is also in Aries, stations retrograde on the 20th. And uh, at the end of the month, Venus will enter Leo on the 27th. So at the bottom, you'll see dates to watch. And those are dates when there's a, a lot of planetary action, especially that 8 to 11 date when, uh, when that's just after Mercury retrograde and Mercury is going to... Uh, um, realign with Mars, uh, uh, the Sun and Saturn oppose, and uh, Mars and Uranus um, uh, hit a trigger as well too, just between the 8th of July and the 11th of July. So that's pretty much a pretty big action week. 14th to the 18th encompasses the, uh, the lunar eclipse. So both of those dates are uh, going to be um, quite action-packed. Here's um, 
the eclipse path for the total solar eclipse in Cancer, July 2nd, 2019. Now, back in August of 2017, we had the, the great American eclipse, which cut a pathway right through the, um, uh, through the middle of the USA, uh, dividing the nation, they say. Uh, here is the great South American eclipse. Uh, which will go from coast to coast, as you can see. It starts in the Pacific Ocean, and the Pacific Ocean, of course, is cradled by the Ring of Fire. Uh, so it's going to go over. Eclipses uh, are uh, effective where their eclipse path is, and then we have uh, the uh, geodetic uh, references, uh, which is too much to go into today, and then we have uh, how they are influencing your specific chart or um, the, the charts of uh, those uh, that are in the news. <laughs> okay. Uh, the one thing I wanted to say about this particular eclipse is, is that on June 17, 16, 17, uh, there was a major power outage in that same region. Uh, uh, 40 million people lost their power overnight. And uh, there were a few reasons why that happened. Jupiter and Neptune were in square, uh, Mercury and Saturn opposed, a few things happening. But this is just a demonstration of how the eclipse is triggered uh, well before its actual event. And here is the eclipse for those who are astrologically versed. I see uh, the sun and moon at 10 degrees of Cancer. Now, eclipses are more potent full moons or new moons. And uh, so um, a new moon, a so total solar eclipse, and a total solar eclipse is more potent than a partial eclipse, uh, is going to be a new beginning. And the new beginnings that are relative to a solar eclipse uh, are uh, preceded by uh, an ending of significance. And this is why uh, solar eclipses in particular are uh, event generating in terms of transitions, uh, a lot of times people will leave the planet if it's your time to go. Uh, and we ha certainly have heard of some um, notables out there in the world who have, who have left the planet quite recently, and there may be uh, some more coming up. Uh, there was a heart-wrenching story quite recently of the uh, baby that was, uh, baby India that was found in a plastic bag, and there's now a uh, thousand people so far in, uh, in the course of like a couple of days that want to adopt her. Um, so uh, a powerful new beginning, right? Uh, and this, if you notice that this eclipse, the, the, the thing with eclipses are that the eclipses travel along the nodal axis, uh, for those who aren't familiar with um, with astro astrological terms, I'm uh, pointing my cursor over the south node here in the 10th house in Capricorn and the north node down here in the 4th house right beside the uh, sun and moon at uh, 17 degrees of Cancer. Um, the nodal axis, uh, these are sensitive points corresponding to the moon's travel and uh, I refer to them as the karmic, um, uh, karmic axis. So the nodes, uh, they Sorry, the eclipses um, are um, uh, agents of um, acceleration for our evolution, and they are karmic thresholds of significance. When we have a cancer eclipse, this is relevant to the past. It has everything to do with, uh, most of you will know what the archetype of cancer references, home, family, uh, children, um, yeah, ancestry, uh, you know, it also deals with everything domestic and national, safety, security, nurturing, uh, nourishment, food, uh, and so forth, you know, all those things. Um, <clears throat> the cancer archetype in evolutionary astrology also corresponds to the self-image or the ego self. And uh, in this, this eclipse is about finding, uh, about a new consciousness coming in regarding uh, taking care of yourself, regarding um, uh, your self-preservation -pres techniques of the past, regarding with, with both Mars and Mercury right here, Mars is triggering that eclipse degree, zero Leo. Mercury is uh, here at three degrees, about to turn retrograde in Leo. The Leo archetype correlates to the heart and center of being, the heart chakra. This combination uh, of this solar eclipse is about you getting back in touch, Cancer, 
uh, with your uh, emotional body, with, with what your essential needs are. It is raising a consciousness of, of your heart. And with the Leo archetype, what is it that makes you happy? What, what is it that lights you up? What, what brings you joy? Who do you love? What do you love? Do you love yourself enough? Um, all of these um, questions or ideas are uh, pertinent to that new moon in Cancer. It is uh, about raising the consciousness about how you have been um, creating security for you in the past, how you have been... Um, uh, what your self-preservation techniques have been and whether they now serve or whether they do not serve. All right. Um, so uh, Mercury, turn, about to turn retrograde, is an archetype of search and retrieve. That's what I'd like to say about that. All right. So uh, this is uh, definitely meant for you to uh, reclaim um, uh, again, uh, what your essential needs are, what you need, what you desire, and uh, how you're going about nurturing and nourishing yourself. And do you need something else? And what would that be? This eclipse is, uh, again, uh, two things. It's bringing in the Jupiter archetype for two reasons. Why? Because the Mars trigger and the, and the Mercury, which has already triggered that zero degrees, and will come back over it again uh, just after the lunar eclipse in the middle of the month, um, is triggering that e total lunar eclipse from January. And that total lunar eclipse in January had Venus and Jupiter uh, uh, conjunct forming a, um, uh, a culminating and uh, new uh, cycle. Uh, both of those together are about new evaluations and about discovering the truth of what it is that I need, what it is that I want, what it is that I desire. So uh, the eclipses in January and the eclipses in July are really pointing us in the way of the future. And it is for, uh, for us to have a higher understanding of what exactly it is and what it what it is that will get you to your future in a way that is going to be in your higher and best interests. I always say that it's very important to be honest and truthful with yourself. Um, do you love it here? Um, is this working for you? What else might it be that, uh, where else do you have to go to that might be better for you? All right, so um, uh, to, uh, especially with Mercury retrograde. Mercury retrograde, we all know about the Murphy's Law stuff, but it is a, an excellent time for self-reflection, for, again, getting back in touch with, uh, with your creative center and with your heart chakra and what it is that is uh, most important for you. So the solar eclipse is an opportunity to further integrate your truth and an opportunity to further integrate the messages that you're receiving from your own consciousness, from your own ego, uh, from your own soul. So eclipses are event generating. They're going to create some action out there. And uh, the cancer archetype uh, is about how you respond. Mercury retrograde is also about how you're taking that information in and uh, making it useful in whatever way you might be doing it. Here is the partial lunar eclipse on the 16th of July. Now, uh, oh, sorry, let me just go back to this uh, point right here. The Both the sun and moon in relationship to this north node, the north node is a toolkit, and so it is setting up environmental conditions, um, setting up uh, the stage by which you have maximum access to some resources that are going to be helpful, perhaps some resources that are needed, even if they are painful, in order for you to grow, in order for you to expand your consciousness, um, and in order for you to, uh, to embark upon the journey to find exactly what your soul is asking you to, uh, to go looking for. All right. And here we have the uh, lunar eclipse on July 16, 24 degrees Capricorn. The uh, moon is sitting here 24 degrees, opposing the sun at 24 degrees Cancer. Uh, on this eclipse, we also have, oh, sorry, I just went a page too far. Uh, we also have Venus sitting here at 16 degrees Cancer, making a uh, an exact opposition to planet Saturn in its own sign, very strong in its own sign, at 
uh, 16 degrees Capricorn, and of course Saturn is traveling retrograde, as is Pluto at this time, and Jupiter. Um, so um, Saturn and Venus opposition, uh, uh, the, uh, this is bringing something to culmination. When we have Venus and Saturn in opposition here, it is about facing a reality. And this uh, Venus position is in really good um, harmony, as is the North Node to uh, planet Neptune. And so uh, Neptune and Venus in trine are facilitating uh, the, um, uh, the opportunity for you to perhaps relinquish or surrender uh, to the reality of the moment. Again, uh, Cancer Capricorn brings something from the past forward. Uh, in order for you to reconcile with it. Venus is an evaluation archetype. Venus and Saturn in opposition, it is for you to reconcile with, with the uh, reality. Um, and so that Venus-Neptune may give you the opportunity to get more comfortable with this idea of releasing, relinquishing, letting go. And of course, all of that cancer stuff is about feeling your way along whatever it is that is required. Uh, feeling your way along what goal or priority would be the right one to take on. Um, you know, and this would be a, a matter of facing the responsibilities and, uh, and of um, putting yourself to work to do whatever it is that you must do for yourself in order to get yourself over to the other side. So if you uh, have something that you're working on and, and uh, if you are desiring to bring something to completion, these transits are very good for doing that. If you are resisting um, seeing the end of something, then they can be pretty tough. Uh, anytime we have resistance, uh, you know, we, uh, we get ourselves into trouble. So I'm hoping that that Venus-Neptune uh, works very nicely to help you to relax into it. And with these transits, these eclipses are, again, uh, taking what was started at the beginning of the year to the next level. And although they are uh, peak points and they can bring uh, something absolute to an absolute end and an absolute beginning, we still, evolution is a process we are in the works with something and it will continue. These eclipses are uh, going to uh, continue to stay uh, as a feature or uh, keep you working on it through the middle of August into September, into the end of October, into the end of the year, and all the way through uh, 2020 as well too. So know that there are many stages to the finishing off programs that we are doing now. And Capricorn is the archetype of a crystallization. Uh, Jupiter is crystallizing our future, and it's doing that in uh, steps and stages. Hopefully it, it can solidify a truth for you that you can, uh, that you can uh, drop yourself into, that you can feel secure uh, uh, about um, uh, using as a foundation and you know when you have all this Capricorn stuff there's a lot of depression going out there uh, on out there's a lot of tough roads or uh, you know uh, tough things to face uh, but uh, know that whatever it is that is valuable whatever it is that is worth it that you know what you see in front of you what you can envision for yourself is most definitely worth the effort or the work or the time that you might put into it all right um, I just uh, go back here. Um, so I will leave it there for today. And I want to say one other thing is, is that I am teaching an intensive program uh, starting in September, uh, Soul Wise School of Evolutionary Astrology. I meant to have a slide here, which I see is not uh, in, my, uh, in my pack today. But if you are interested in uh, studying with me, then please do make contact. And I wish you all the best for the month ahead. Thank you for joining me today.